Oh, hey. Welcome, hi, get comfortable. Today I'm gonna to take you through my stream setup because it's been a while. I did a video previously that focused more on uh, the aesthetics of the stream space, which is obviously something that's very personal from person to person. But check that out if you're interested in how to add personality to your space or the background of your stream. But for this video, let's talk about tech because that tends to be what people focus on when we're talking about stream setups. Because, you know, the people want to know what it takes to make a stream look good, sound good, function well with as few hiccups as possible. So I by no means have the flashiest stream setup around, but I'm really happy with how it performs in the space that I have and for the level of streaming that I do. I also wanna preface this by saying that if you're thinking about starting live streaming, I definitely do not recommend that you go out and invest in all of this stuff. You know, live streaming can be a fun, social, community fostering endeavor that allows you the freedom to create content around the things that you're passionate about. All right, we're doing well with our tasks. I haven't seen any dead people. I haven't seen any dead people. But there is also the consideration of, you know, the thing you do recreationally for fun or to de-stress suddenly becomes your job and that kind of changes the nature of your relationship with it a bit. You know, it happens, particularly with creative hobbies. In fact, there are a variety of reasons why after a couple of weeks or even months of streaming, you might find that it is just not for you. So you don't want to be stuck with a whole bunch of expensive gear that you're not going to use. Start out with just the basics, expand from there, upgrading the priority areas as you need. Well, we may as well start with the start of the show. No, I'm not talking about me, you guys. Stop it. Gosh. This is my Legion 7i desktop. I just celebrated my five year anniversary as a Lenovo Legion ambassador and I cannot speak highly enough of my experience working with them. Legion just really hits that balance between style and substance so well and it's been awesome to have the hardware that I need wherever I go. So the Legion 7i desktop has an Intel Core i9 in there and a 3080 Ti. I would say I run a single PC stream setup 95% of the time because I'm lazy and I don't want to mess around with two PCs. I hate having two keyboards and two mice. It's just so annoying and I don't like desk clutter. So a powerful GPU and CPU are kind of necessary to get that job done. That said, stream software can still be a little bit unstable with a few select games that are perhaps less optimized, in which case the resource drain is pretty intense no matter what I do. Kelly, what are you doing? Hi, Kelly, no! So in those cases, I will run the stream from a separate machine or from my laptop. This is the Legion 7i gaming laptop. I use this to game and edit on when I'm traveling or when I'm in the studio in the city. I can run a stream from it. And it's also just useful to have here so that I've got another screen to have chat on when I'm live. I find for live streaming, two monitors is necessary and three just makes life a lot easier. These are 27 inch Lenovo FreeSync monitors, 144 Hertz. I've seen interesting setups where people have them like stacked or turned portrait. I think it's easier for me to just be across everything when it's all laid out. I'm a really visual person and that's just, that's what I like. I also am not ashamed to admit that I love RGB. I love all of this. Apart from being cool for me to look at, I think it's also nice when I'm live streaming to have you know, all of these different customizable lights that I can use to cast color on my face. I think it's just makes for a more interesting picture. My peripherals, I swap and change a lot because it's fun, but in general, I like a mechanical keyboard and a mouse with lots of buttons. But I definitely recommend a big, like long boy mouse pad. I just find it creates a central zone where all of your things are contained. And this may sound a bit hippie, but I feel like it helps me stay like, mentally focused when I'm working to have that zone there. I don't know. Does that make sense? For sound, I use this Blue Ember XLR mic, which requires a mixer. USB mics are absolutely fine. You do not need an XLR, but I have very high ceilings and I was really struggling with echo in this space and a few other sound issues. So I found in addition to soundproofing, um, switching to an XLR mixer just gave me a few more options for improving sound quality. I just have a small version of this mixer. This is the Go XLR Mini. It lets me control a few basic sound inputs on different channels, like my mic, music, voice chat, that sort of thing. But if you want the freedom to control more sound inputs, uh, like separate alerts or whatever else, then the bigger version of the mixer will help you do that. The cool thing about these mixers is it makes it really easy to quickly mute certain channels. There's even a button for expletives so you can see yourself. I said censor yourself. Stop. My camera is a Sony A5100. Heaps of streamers use it. It's just a really good mid-range mirrorless camera that gives you a step up from a webcam without being as bulky as a DSLR. You do need to run it through a capture card though, so that kind of takes away the simplicity of a USB webcam. 
But again, it just depends on what you're after in terms of picture quality. It also depends on the picture that you're outputting and your stream bitrate. Like there's no point in spending money on a fancy camera if you're streaming with a low bit rate at 720p. So, you know, factor that in and start with something simple. Okay, let's talk lighting. I mostly use one Elgato key light. Again, just to keep it simple, cause I am lazy. But if you want more even coverage, which makes it more flattering, or maybe you have a green screen that requires really even light, then typically two lights is gonna be better. For that, I like these Logitech Litra Glow panels. For lights that are small, they put out a surprising amount of light and it's really soft on the eyes, which is something that I find increasingly becoming a factor, particularly when I'm streaming late at night. But also soft light is more flattering in general, so that's nice. Both the Elgato and the Logi lights feed into software, which is great. The Litras can be controlled and adjusted from G-Hub and the Elgato key light works with their control center and their stream deck. Speaking of the stream deck, this is super handy for switching scenes, adjusting lighting. You can have different sound cues queued up. I've added a few different things on there. Like I can push a button that sends out a tweet saying I'm live because sometimes I'll forget to do that. But the amount of times I've accidentally bumped it, like when I'm cleaning or something and then sent the tweet out when I'm not live. I don't know, it's not actually that useful. And for that reason, I wouldn't recommend having like a go live button programmed into your stream deck. It's just too risky. For some fun lighting options, I've recently upgraded my Nanoleaf panels. I really love the combination of shapes and sizes they have now. I spent like an insane afternoon doing like a million different combinations of patterns. I went a bit crazy. It was a lot. But I particularly like these backlit bar shaped ones. They're the Nanoleaf lines. Because I had to get soundproofing installed, I was kind of limited with how I could decorate the space behind the desk. And these lines were the perfect solution. And you can download all of these like user created profiles and stuff. Oh, and the shapes react to touch as well, which is super cool. Lastly, I spoke about this desk in my other aesthetics video, but I have a sit stand desk from Desky. They're an Australian company and I really love it. Not only for the standing function, but I'm not super tall. So ergonomically when I'm sitting with my feet flat on the ground, like you're supposed to, a standard desk height is actually too high for me. Being able to lower the desk has been really incredible given how many hours I spend here. Sit stand desks are quite expensive. I also really wanted a wooden desktop to match in with the other like wood pieces that I have around the room, but hardwood desktops are also really expensive. I compromised and went with mango wood, which is kind of in between a softwood and a hardwood, but is kind of treated to look like hardwood. And I regret it, honestly. I'm clumsy and I've dropped a few lights and things on it and it's just, it dents really easily. And I kind of just wish I'd gone all in and invested in proper hardwood to begin with. But I also know people that have just sourced their own wooden desktop somewhere cheaper because you literally just screw it onto the legs. So if you've got a drill, you can kind of do whatever you want. So yeah, anyway, that's pretty much it. This is what works for me in the space that I have and I'm really happy with it. I don't feel the pressure to have like the biggest, best everything, but there are a few things that I just won't compromise on. Again, I think that's personal for everyone. I also feel like online you see a really broad range of stream setups from, you know, super technical, loads of gadgets, you know, really slick tricked out with all the latest gear to, you know, setups that are the most minimal basic thing ever and you're seeing someone's dirty laundry in the background. And it seems to have very little bearing on whether or not you're gonna be successful as a creator. I think really it's about personal preference and comfort. It's about ease and function. And I guess what makes you happy if you're gonna be in this space a lot. Well, I hope that was helpful. If you wanna check out the Lenovo Legion range of gaming PCs and laptops, there is a link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.